Hey, hey, this is Bud with Mental Game Mechanics. I'm excited today to talk to you about why you need to own who you are. Um, I, when I, I don't know, you probably don't know this about me, but maybe you do. Um, I've, in my past, uh, struggled a little bit with um, having a temper. Uh, I, I've been known to have a short fuse and um, don't know why or where it came from, um, probably from my dad. <laughs> and uh, so him and I, him and I together, we can we can both have a short fuse, and and we've had we've had a few blow ups in the past, um, as you can imagine. Um, and you know that's that's always you know ever since I've been a kid, it's something that I've kind of struggled with. I'm not exactly sure you know what causes it, or you know I have I have my theories and whatnot. But anyway, it's just kind of part of of life as I've as I've grown up. And when I when I first got married, um, my my wife was you know pretty clear with me that. Um, she wasn't cool with, um, anger or, you know, uh, yelling or arguments that were, you know, really heated like that. Right. She just not, she was not interested in anything like that. And so I kind of, you know, being, trying to be a good husband, I said, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. And, um, I kind of, you know, in times that I got frustrated, um, I, I'd kind of put on a poker face, you know, um, obviously when you, when you love someone, you, you, you do your best to, to accommodate and compromise. And, and I'm sometimes not very good at that. Um, but you know, that's, that's what I tried to do. And, um, you know, at times I just had to, you know, breathe and step out of the room for a minute, you know, do my thing, whatever I had to do to, to kind of figure it out, um, and, and kind of work through the, through that whole process. And, um, you know, what ended up happening is I kind of just started bottling things up, you know, just kind of sweeping it under, under the rug, so to speak. And, um, you know, it it worked at times. Um, but what I kind of figured out was that by bottling it up, I wasn't ever really dealing with the issue or dealing with what was actually causing the frustration that I might've been feeling. Right. I, I realized that, um, uh, anxiety and like frustration is what was coming out, um, in a form that was very, um, very different, uh, at least for me. And it, I think we all manifest emotions differently, but in, and for me, it, what it did is it, it, it eliminated my ability to just kind of be present in the moment and really enjoy the moments, right? I was always worried about the past or worried about the future or the next thing, right? I, it really just kind of pushed me one way or the other. The other thing that it did is it, um, it made me, uh, my short fuse became even shorter because I had kind of pent up anger at times. And, and, you know, I'm not saying I'm angry all the time. You know, I'm not the Hulk, but, uh, what I am saying is at times when I was frustrated and I had to bottle that up, um, that bottling, you know, just like shaking a, a can or something, you know, that, that pressure builds and it doesn't take much for that pressure to, to pop. And for me, you know, that it was, it was the slightest little thing would just boom set me off. And, um, so anyway, amidst me kind of trying to understand this whole process and figuring out who I am and, you know, we all have, are at different levels with, with that. And, you know, we should continue to be at different levels with that, regardless of any progress that we have or haven't made. And so amidst all this, um, I was uh, studying um, the mental game for my shooting sports. Um, I'm I'm an avid clay target shooter. And so I, you know, for me, mental performance has been a a big topic of study for me throughout my entire life. And um, I was reading a book about shooting performance, and it's called Shooting From Within. Um, you know, great book geared around mostly pistol shooting, but it's, you know, really, really around the mindset stuff. And in that book, he, he, he talks a little bit about the attitude, um, good, bad, you know, he, he's just kind of talking about attitudes in general. And he says, um, a lot of times, uh, people or competitors will s- kind of develop this alter ego that starts to come out when they get into competition. And what he says is that when you do that, you're not naturally being who you are. You are forcing something to come out that's not naturally within your ability. And so it, it, it automatically will be hindered simply because it's, it's a forced, uh, alter ego or it's a forced attitude and it's just not naturally who you are. And that got me thinking, um, because 
when I when you run away from the issues that you're you're kind of facing, when you're running away from um, the, the problems that you're having, you're not dealing with the issue, right? If you're sweeping it under the rug, you're not actually dealing with it. And for me, you know, I had been kind of pushing off this frustration or this, you know, this temper, this short fuse that I have, and I never really, you know, truly dealt with it. And so, um, it, by doing that, I, I, I really learned from this book that I just needed to own who I am, right? And own the fact that I have a short fuse. And by, by developing that clarity, now I can say, okay, how can I deal with what I'm feeling and move through it instead of around it, right? That was like, boom, because it's, you know, we all tend to go to the least resistant thing, right? And so by just not, not addressing the subject and moving away from it, a lot less resistance there. And so um, by, by us doing that, sweeping it under the rug, we're not ever going to grow. We're going we're gonna to run into issues. We're going to, you know, we're going to have that shorter fuse. We're going to blow up at the slightest thing, right? Um, and this could be in, in a number of different areas of, of, of your life, right? You've got a, a, an issue with your revenue and your business. Okay, you got to figure out how to do that, deal with that. You can't just avoid it, right? Otherwise, you're going to go out of business. Um, there's a number of things that you have to just deal with, tackle face on. And, and go with it, right? You just have to move through it and figure it out. You can't just run away from it. Um, you have to own who you are. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the point today, right? Is owning who we are because what that's going to do is, is going to give us the clarity that we need today so that we can move forward and through the issues or the problems or the challenges that we are currently facing, right? And, and by having that clarity and owning who we are today, we'll be able to move forward into tomorrow with a much clearer course of action. And so, you know, learning how we deal with all of these different issues, um, you know, uh, some of us, you know, we might have real big emotional issues that we have to deal with. And, you know, if you're in that situation, find somebody who's, you know, a licensed person that can, that, that can help you with that if you need, right? By owning that and figuring out who we are and, and stopping the denial of all of those things, sweeping them under the rug and just owning who we are, it allows us to have clarity on how we can really deal with it, right? If I can look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, dude, you got a short temper, you got to figure it out. Now I can start taking productive actions that help me to make that uh, fuse longer, right? To deal with anger instead of, you know, sweeping it aside and just bottling it up and then blowing up at some random conversation with my, with my wife. Right. <laughs> like that's, that's the whole, that's the whole point, right. Is that we all want to get better. We all have, you know, ambition to be better than we are. And without clarity, we can never achieve that. And so, um, it's that, that's the first step to really truly making progress. And, um, with that, you know, for me, um, the quote comes to mind, uh, when anger rises, think of the consequences. That's a quote by Confucius. Um, when, when, for me, when I think of the consequences of, of, you know, my temper or whatever, it really helps me to kind of go back to, whoa, if I do that, that's going to hinder me here, right? It, it helps me kind of connect the dots, so to speak. And when you can take time and figure out a way to do stuff, right? Like for me, that quote is helpful because I have a, you know, anger thing, right? So find something that's, that's going to help you, right? It could be talking to a friend. It could be writing it in a journal. It could be writing a letter to somebody, uh, speaking your mind, saying everything you need to say, and then burning the letter because now you've got it out. You've, you've let it go, right? Could be, um, you know, let's say it's revenue in your, in your business, right? Could be, Hey, how can I improve my marketing to create more leads here? right? It could be in your, in your marriage, you're, you're dealing with communication issues, right? Learning how to appeal to your spouse, right? Understanding their style of communication so that you can communicate to them in a much better manner. That clarity of owning who you are is powerful. And when you take it and put it into productive actions, you can really drive the needle forward in your life, not just not just in your business, not just in your marriage or one or the other, right? You can use this 
across the board, but it's that mental shift of owning who you are that creates that clarity. And, um, you know, I really think that if we just stop every day and just take a second and assess what we're doing, assess the day, assess how we felt, assess all of those things, it's going to give us momentum into the next day to then take better actions and clear more specific uh, items on our lists to do that's going to help us move forward. Um, not only that, but when you begin to understand yourself with who you are and owning that, you can then begin to understand others because you know yourself. And the key to loving others is first loving yourself. And, uh, you know, there's there's been several ideas kind of in this, in this topic, but what I, what I want you to focus in on is just owning who you are. Stop pushing it aside. Stop pushing it under the rug. Own it and then use it to create clarity so that you can take better actions tomorrow to make your life better, to give you that mental shift that's going to improve your results, that's going to help you get more in your life, be more for others around you and do more um, to, to help you, you know, really forge and live the life that you want to live. So I leave you with that and hope that you can take that and, and, and turn it into something productive for yourself. Uh, I'll leave you with that and I hope you have an incredible day. We'll talk soon.